Yeah. 
Jerusalem Temple Church of God in Christ here in Wheeling, Mississippi. We're happy that you're tuned in for this service. But certainly we pray God's blessings upon you in time like these. Let us have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you this morning. We thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your hand of deliverance. Oh God, we thank you how you've kept us, how you watched over us, how you preserved your people. In the name of Jesus, look on and bless now, oh God. Deliver now, Lord Jesus, the condition of this world, the condition of our country, the condition of people around, the sick, oh God, and those that are sick and those that are bereaved. We ask your blessings, Lord, and that you remove this virus, for you can, my Savior, and your will be done, and your kingdom come, in the hearts of men and women everywhere. We pray God's blessings upon you. God keep you. Praise the Lord. We thank God for this day, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to be glad and rejoice in it. Thank God for what he is doing now because he is on the throne. He is in control. I know some people say differently, but God is ultimately in control. I want to go word to the word of the Lord from the 18th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, beginning at verse 1. And it reads, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessels that he made or that one vessel, the vessel that he made was marred in his hand, in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. And from that passage, I, I just want to use that the subject, the potter and the clay the potter and the clay now this passage it shows us one of the deepest or spiritual truths that these spiritual truths were shown through mediums that are common ordinary things the Lord took and used ordinary earthly things to show a deepest spiritual truth. Here, this particular passage can be applied directly to Israel. And it applies basically directly to Israel. Um, it is a fitting type of Israel. And this is the direct application of it. You see, Israel uh, was a special people. Israel had been a, a vessel of honor. They had been a vessel of honor, of honor to God, but because of sin and disobedience, they had become scattered and broken, scattered and broken, and they are still scattered and broken even today. But the time will come Time will come when Israel will be born again in a day. And therefore, praise the Lord, uh, but the time will come when she will be delivered. She will be delivered again. And praise the Lord, uh, because of the fact that uh, she's in the hand of God, and she will become a matchless beauty. So we have this passage of scripture that really at this time, now that time re referred to, to 
or directly to Israel, but it can be used and it can be be referred to many other things. It could be a type of the world. We can refer it to the world, praise the Lord. It would seem that the nations have lost their equilibrium. They've lost their equilibrium. They are striving to reach the paradise of peace and prosperity. They're striving to reach that point. And through the years of chaos and collapse, uh, they have been characterized or recharacterized them uh, as, praise the Lord, of nations or nations that have forgotten God. But now we see that God said that because of the chaos and the collapsing of the nations that they're characterized by, God has said, I will overturn it. I'm going to overturn it. Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I'm going to overturn it. Uh, when, praise the Lord, will he do this? Well, uh, it will be someday, praise the Lord, when God will make a new heaven and a new earth. And there's a third application that we can apply to individuals, ourselves as individuals. We look at the, the first application we applied to Israel. This passage was directly written to Israel, but it comes down to us today. We can apply it again, as, as we stated, to a type of world. And a third application, it can be applied to each of us as individuals. But when Jeremiah went down to the potter's house, you know, sometimes God gives different directions or he gives us direction as to what to do and where to go. He had a special purpose for Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house. I want you to look there and see what the potter is doing. And, and there, praise the Lord, at the potter's place, we find that the potter had a material, and that is he had clay. Not only that, but secondly, the potter had a plan. And third, praise the Lord, we find that the potter became disappointed. And so when we look at this, the potter became disappointed because the vessel that he made was marred in his hand. It was marred in his hand, and so therefore the potter decided that he will make it over again. He will make the vessel. In other words, he wanted to have a good vessel, the vessel that seemed good to him. He wanted to make that vessel over again. Now there was a process. Praise the Lord. And the Lord let us know through the prophet Isaiah that uh, uh, as the clay was in the potter's hand, so are you, Israel, the nation, the individual, in God's hand also. And this part of praise the Lord, the, the, the material, the clay. You see, we are reminded uh, in the book of Isaiah that we are again and again, that we are made of the clay. We're made of the clay. And Job answers that same thing and let us know that we are made, he has made us from the clay. Therefore, the prophet Isaiah reminds us, praise the Lord, again, that how we were formed. Made out of the clay. And that, praise the Lord, God was our potter. God is our potter today. And he's able to... Uh, make you over again. He's able to make anybody over again, regardless as to the condition, regardless as to what one may have done or what trouble one may be in this day. At this time, God is able to make you something differently. Huh? And therefore, praise the Lord, the clay as the clay is a product of the earth. 
God formed man out of the dust of the earth, out of the ground, praise the Lord. When he formed man out of the dust of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so, praise the Lord, the, the Bible said, Thus thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And we know, praise the Lord, without a doubt, we know, and I think mostly everybody know, that we're going to return to the dust. Although men are trying to uh, invent something or to discover how they can just really make man live longer. And, and some are even thinking in terms of man living forever. But it will never happen. It will never take place. Praise the Lord. You see, in our human body, we have the same constituent elements uh, that's found in a lump of clay. Praise the Lord. And how humiliating, if you say. And how it looked like so much time is spent decorating this lump of clay. We get in the mirrors and, and uh, well, it's fine to look your best. But praise the Lord, we don't want to just praise this body so uh, hours and hours trying to get it to look like we want it to look. Because all of this is vanity. All of this is vanity. Praise the Lord. Before the clay, before the clay can take the plan of the potter, uh, it must be subjected to various processes before it can take on the plan of the potter. And uh, the clay, first of all, it must be softened. The clay must be softened. You see, the potter can do nothing with hard clay. He can do nothing with hard clay. And in the days of Jeremiah, it was softened by the feet. Softened by the feet, the, the words say that the potter treaded the clay. He treaded the clay. Now, the clay then was put in the pond of water. It was put in the pond of water for a certain period of time because you have to have soft clay. And some people have already said, I'm not going to be walked over by anybody. Uh, I'm not a, a dope head. I'm not going to be. And, and I know my rights. Well, do you really know your rights? We need to know our rights in God. Of course, praise the Lord. But this is the reason why uh, that we are not taking on the divine image. Praise the Lord. Because we are looking at our own image so much and concerned about uh, how we're doing and what we're looking at and, and what have you. So therefore, we, we are guilty. We are guilty of pride, uh, of self-will, guilty of rebellion, uh, arrogance, sense, praise the Lord, guilty of stubbornness and many other things. You find that we as individuals and this world is guilty of. Job cried out once and said, uh, uh, God, make my heart soft. In other words, make it tender, uh, make it pliable. Uh, and, and you see, there must be a softening. There must be a softening, a mellowing influence of the Holy Ghost before we can become or be anything real in any real service to the Lord. We have to be all the hardness has to be taken out. The summer said that the Lord is now unto thee, unto those, praise the Lord, who are of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. The Lord is nigh, praise the Lord. He's not far away. Well, he can be touched. I say he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Praise the Lord. And after the clay is softened enough, then the potter, he takes it from the water and he puts it, he throws it into a revolving drum. And there, praise the Lord, he crushes it in a meal and, and, and the meal will grind it and grind it and 
Praise the Lord, because he must have soft clay that's pliable. It keeps on grinding it and grinding it. There must be no hard substance that's left in the clay. Hallelujah. When I think about individuals, when I think about our soul, praise the Lord, sometimes God takes us through many things and, and get all of the hardness out and many other things. But to get it out, praise the Lord. And this as the potter does the clay, he grinds it and grinds it again until he gets all the hardness out. And when he gets all of the hardness out, then hallelujah, he's ready to carry it through other processes. And therefore, praise the Lord. But if that clay could talk, I say if that clay can talk like some of us, praise the Lord, it probably would say, why throw me in the meal to suffer such excruciating pain? In other words, uh, I, I was taken from the, the ground and I was thrown in the water. Isn't that enough? Haven't I endured enough? How much more must I suffer? You know, sometimes some of us are the same way. We say, we talk about how much we have suffered and what we've gone through. We say sometimes maybe how much more must I suffer? Praise the Lord. But the clay has no willpower. The clay has no willpower, but we are different. The clay submits. The clay submits, and it is confirmed into the plan of the potter. And therefore, praise the Lord, if you look at the greatest mission, the greatest mission in life is submission. That's the greatest mission. Praise the Lord, even before you go out on your mission or a mission that you think that, that God had you going through or going to perform. But uh, the greatest mission is submission. But there's a plan for every life. There's a plan for every life. And, and he will show you if you will allow him to do so. God will show you. Praise the Lord. We complain when the hard and bitter experiences come our way and praise the Lord. But we ought to thank God for he's molding us. Thank God he's making us. He's making us for his glory. We're here for the glory of God. We're here to magnify him and to worship him. The part of he sits down at the wheel. He sits down at the wheel and he takes that shapeless clay and he takes that clay upon the revolving wheel and he proceeds to make a beautiful vessel. Hallelujah. But it takes time to make a beautiful vessel. And many times, praise the Lord God, has spent a lot of time with individuals, a lot of time with the nation. And he's still spending much time with Israel. He has spent, praise the Lord, uh, uh, for if we look at the Old Testament all the way from Genesis to, to Malachi, he has spent especially with Israel because Israel being his chosen people. And that part of praise the Lord, with his fingers, he shaped the vessel to his liking. And when he does that, praise the Lord, uh, you see, but if the vessel was left soft, if it was left soft, it would crumble and be useless. It would crumble and be useless if it's left soft. Uh, and what does he do then? He takes and he put the vessel into a furnace. When he takes and put the vessel into a furnace, he burns it. He burns it. Uh, at first it was hard and he softened it by placing it in the pond of water. And now when it's softened again, he now has to harden it again. And this time, when he hardened it the second time, it give it, it give the vessel permanence. Praise the Lord. It gives it endurance. It gives the, it gives the vessel the quality that it must have. Praise the Lord. And so God takes us through many things. Hallelujah. And, and the Bible said that, that uh, there is a furnace of affliction for the people of God. There's a furnace of affliction for the people of God. 
And, and, and we must realize that as being a, a, a children of God or being a saint of God, that there are some things that we've got to go through. Hallelujah. God has to reshape and remake. Praise the Lord. And many of the afflictions, the Bible said, of the righteousness. Many are the afflictions of the righteousness, but the Lord delivered him from all of them. Praise the Lord. If we just hold on to God and recognize that what I'm going through is for the purpose of God. What I'm going through, God is just making me again. He's just, praise the Lord, shaping me up, praise the Lord, just like he wants to be. And I tell you, praise the Lord, all we have to do is just to surrender to the Lord, praise the Lord. And he will deliver us. He will take you through the fire and you shall not be hurt, shall not be burned. Hallelujah. Go through the waters and you won't be drowned. Hallelujah. But if we just hold on to God and believe God, he'll do it for us. Can you tell the Lord, thank you. Peter said, now, when these strange, strange things begin to happen to you, uh, concerning the fiery dots that the devil may uh, shoot after you, uh, they just come to try you. They come to try you. Praise the Lord. And don't think, it's some, don't think about that something is really happening to me and what's going on with me. Praise the Lord. But no, praise the Lord, that these fiery dots are going to come your way. Praise the Lord. And we have to go through. If we expect to reign with him, we're going to have to suffer in this life. Because the captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering. Hallelujah. And if Jesus suffered and paid the price... Hallelujah, we will suffer in this life. James said that blessed is the man that endured temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life. Praise the Lord. Paul also said, for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, it worketh for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is, that when we go into, when God, when the potter put the vessel into the fire, he does not put it in there alone. But he takes that vessel and he put it in another vessel, another container. So he encloses it. And when he encloses it there, the flame never reaches the potter's vessel. The flame itself never reaches the potter's vessel. He wants the heat from the flame. Praise the Lord to meet the vessel and to make that vessel hard again. That vessel now is able to, it's enduring. It, it's durable. It's, it's not like the soft clay that would just shatter, go to pieces again or crumble up again, I must say. But he gives it permanence and that's what God does for his people. Praise the Lord. And we just have to be willing to go through. For the Isaiah said that when thou walkest through the fire, it shall not burn you. Praise the Lord. And neither shall the flame be kindled upon you. Hallelujah. And one thing about it, you can go through with God being your helper. You can go through everything that come against us. Sometimes you may have to, and many times you have to experience things, and you have to know for sure now that God is with me. Praise the Lord that I can go through anything that the enemy brings against me. Can you tell the Lord thank you? Praise the Lord. And then uh, we look at Isaiah said again, hallelujah, that the flames, as I said, will not hurt you. Will not hurt you. Nothing can reach you apart from the divine will of the Father. Nothing can reach you. Hallelujah. And remember, God promised to preserve his people. God promised to keep his people. And there are examples in the word of God where we find this. The Hebrew boys went into the burning flames. Hallelujah. But they did not, the flames did not touch them. Hallelujah. Not a, a, a strand of hair was singed on their head. Hallelujah. Uh, their, their clothes, praise the Lord, that came out of there. Their clothes were 
still intact like they were when they went in. And, and even Daniel, praise the Lord, when he went in the lion's den, hallelujah, and went to sleep on the lions, hallelujah, and woke, woke, woke up, no harm, and unto Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the Lord said that I will build a wall of fire about you. In other words, I'm going to preserve you if you walk up right before me. Can you just tell the Lord thank you? Hallelujah. You know how God want to really bless us. How God want to really touch you. How God want to really deliver. But there's so much trouble. There's so much evil in the minds and the hearts of people that God just cannot do what he really wants to do for us. Can you tell the Lord thank you again? You out in radio can tell him thank you. <laughs> you out there can tell the Lord thank you for his goodness and for his mercy. Hallelujah. And when the, the Lord had Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house, because he wanted Jeremiah to experience the things also. And, and, and after, the Lord did not speak to him as such until he got down to the potter's house. And Jeremiah said when he got down there that the word of the Lord came to him saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as the potter? Praise the Lord. In other words, just like the potter did with the clay, cannot I deal with you? He said, Behold, he prophesied to them, Behold, the clay is in the potter's hand, as you are in my hand, O house of Israel. And how God kept the house of Israel in his hand for so long. For so long, praise the Lord. But time and time again, they sinned against him. They went into idolatry. They went into all other kinds of things. But the Lord said, Cannot I do with you what this potter is doing with the clay? And God is saying that to the church today. He's saying that to the nations today. How can do with you as the potter dealt with Israel? Praise the Lord as the, as the potter was in the hand of, uh, uh, pray, as the, the, the clay was in the hand of the potter, God is saying, I can deal with you. I can make you over again. Praise the Lord. And at what instance I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom, the Lord said, I, I, I will pluck it up to pluck them up, to pull them down and to destroy them. He speaks of the nation. If the nation does not change, if the nation does not come to him, God said, praise the Lord, I took, I'll pluck you up. Hallelujah. I'll pull you down and I will destroy it. Hallelujah. And if that nation against whom I have pronounced, if they would turn from their evil, the Lord said, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do to them. Hallelujah. And God says that to us today. Praise the Lord. It, 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 if it do, if one does evil in my sight, or if a nation does evil in my, evil in my sight, and that it obeys not my voice, then praise the Lord. If it would turn, but if he obeys not my voice and would, would not repent of the, of the evil, what which I said, praise the Lord, I will benefit them. And the Lord is saying, hallelujah, there will be no benefit. There will be no such benefit. The things that God has in store for his people. And one thing here, he speaks to the men of Judah. You see, praise the Lord, uh, the ten tribes and the southern kingdom, well, they were in the northern kingdom, and Judah were in the southern kingdom. Now, the northern kingdom had been destroyed, had been destroyed hundreds of years before this come to Judah. Judah, praise the Lord, with Jerusalem, and a number of those uh, children of Israel that were in the northern kingdom, they had come down to the southern kingdom and now was in a southern kingdom, but that still, praise the Lord, Israel. 
and God is talking to his people and still pleading with his people. But they just would not hear God. Hallelujah. And you know, I think about in our time today, think about the church and think about individuals that are going their own way. Still will not hear what the word of God is saying. Still saying that I'm my own man, I'm my own boss. That I can do that nobody can tell me what to do. Even the God cannot tell me what to do. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have free wills. And God allowed that and gave that to us. But oh, if you could just but hear the voice of God. If you could just but turn around. Hear the voice of God. Repent of evil. Praise the Lord. Repent of your wayward ways and uh, uh, confess sin and accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Then you will be a blessed people. Hallelujah. And sometimes people think I, I have to have the world's riches and many things of the world to be blessed. But oh, praise the Lord. You have all things when you are in the Lord Jesus. One day there will be a different situation. There will be a different thing, praise the Lord, as to what God has promised his people. Hallelujah. And I tell you, that's a day that one can look forward to when you've given your life to God. Hallelujah. When you forget about yourself and think about him and just worship him and praise him and all oh, the joy that will flood your soul. Hallelujah. When you receive, once you receive him, the joy will be there. Praise the Lord. And if it does evil, but if you do evil in his sight, and that you won't obey his voice, hallelujah, and will not repent, then good will not come your way. Praise the Lord. And he speak to the men of Judah, and he told the inhabitants of Judah, and of Jerusalem, he's saying, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I frame evil against you. I frame this evil against you, and a device, praise, and I devise a device against you. And he said, He pleads again, Return to me now. Praise the Lord, every one of you, from his evil ways. But he said, Back during this time when Jeremiah the prophet prophesied to them, he said, and they said, there is no hope. Hallelujah. But we will walk after our own devices, and every man will do what's the imagination in his hearts to do. All the evil that he imagines that there is no hope for us. But the Lord has said, there is hope. Some people have given up today and saying there is no hope. The devil has confused. The devil has contaminated and poisoned the minds until they feel that there is no hope. But as long, hallelujah, if you can just praise the Lord, keep the Lord within your minds, praise the Lord, and know, praise the Lord, that there is hope. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad for hope. And everybody ought to be glad for hope. Hallelujah. This hope in Christ Jesus. And then praise the Lord. If one would just give up. Give up this life. And just think for a while. When you just sit, just sit down and just think. Just meditate for a while. And think about what the word of God has said to us. And that the word of God is right. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Praise the Lord. And so many people are denying Christ today. That he is not the son of God. Praise the Lord. So he was a great prophet. But the word of God said the only way that we can be saved. Is by the grace of God. And by our faith in Christ Jesus. Believing that he died, he was buried, and he arose from the dead. And therefore, praise the Lord, when we come to him with a serious heart of mind, with these things in our mind, and 
Repent of all evil doing. He will accept you. He will cleanse you. He will sanctify you. Justify you. Praise the Lord. Make you ready and fit for the rapture of the church. We thank God for you on today. We want to encourage your hearts. Hope that we've said a few things to encourage you. I want you to keep on tuning in to these services. Praise the Lord. And that's truly God will bless and He is blessing. We're praying for every one of you. We pray that God will even deliver us from this virus. Praise the Lord. But sometimes things come to get our attention. Things come to praise the Lord. Maybe knock us to our knees and admit that God is God and there is no other. Thank you for tuning into these services. The Lord bless you. We're so glad that you joined us for this service. And we ask that you would like our Facebook page as well as subscribe to Jerusalem Temple's YouTube channel. If any of our services have been a blessing to you, we ask that you would be a blessing to this ministry. You may give your tax-deductible contribution by one of these methods. Through Givelify, simply looking up Jerusalem Temple, Church of God in Christ in Leland, Mississippi. PayPal, or you may mail your check payable to Jerusalem Temple at P.O. Box 329, Leland, Mississippi, 38756. That address again is P.O. Box 329, Leland, Mississippi, 38756. We definitely want to stay connected with you. Continue to visit Jerusalem Temple's page for updates, weekly Bible studies, prayer calls, and all services. Thank you and God bless.